We're live in Salford for a TV first. It's Boris Johnson versus Jeremy Corbyn. The ITV debate. Good evening. In just over three weeks, we'll be voting in what many think is the most important general election of our lifetimes. Tonight, the Conservative Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, debate face to face, responding to questions from ITV viewers. And you at home can take part too using the hashtag ITV debate. Later tonight at 10 o'clock, you'll be able to see other leaders on ITV when Lib Dem, Joe Swinson, the SNP's Nicola Sturgeon, the Brexit Party's Nigel Farage and Green Party co-leader Sean Berry will be interviewed live by Nina Hussain. But now it's time for Boris Johnson versus Jeremy Corbyn. Before we take our first question tonight, they'll each now make an opening statement. Mr Corbyn, it's over to you. Thank you, Julie. And to everyone watching this debate tonight, this election gives you a real choice about your future the future of your community and of our country. Labour is offering real change and real hope. We will build a fairer Britain that cares for all, where wealth and power are shared. The Conservative government is failing. It's failed on the economy, on the climate crisis, the National Health Service and on Brexit. We will get Brexit sorted by giving you, the people, the final say and implement whatever you decide. Too many families are without a proper home, struggling to make ends meet, while tax cuts are handed to the super rich. We can do better than this with a Labour government on your side, a Labour government for the many, not just the few. Mr Corbyn, thank you. Mr Johnson. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Mr Corbyn. There's only one reason why we're having this election. That is that we have a deadlocked parliament that will not deliver Brexit. And whether you voted for leave or remain, people want to get Brexit done and to unleash the potential of this entire country. And we Conservatives can, because if you vote for us, we have a deal that is ready to go, approved by everyone of the 635 Conservative candidates standing at this election. And as soon as we can get that deal through Parliament, as we can in the next few weeks, we can get on with the people's priorities. And that's the choice. Dither and delay, deadlock and division under a Corbyn-Sturgeon coalition with two referendums, another one on the EU and then another one on Scotland, or we can end this national misery, break the deadlock, get Brexit done, and make 2020 a year of prosperity and growth where we invest in our NHS you, and Johnson. deal with the cost of living. Together, Th you, let's Mr. take Johnson. this country forwards. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Well, we invited viewers from right across the country to submit questions. We've selected the questioners and they are in the studio with us this evening. The two leaders don't know what they'll be asked. Also here, the people who will listen to tonight's debate. Some have voted Conservative and some Labour in the past and some have voted for other parties across the UK. And our first question tonight comes from Kath Sherlock from Bradford. Kath. Both of you have promised that we'll, Brexit will be resolved in the next few months. But you're really telling us the truth. There have been so many broken promises. Can you reassure me that we will not be talking about this forever? Thank you very much indeed, uh, Kath. So a question about the timetable for Brexit. Uh, to respond first, Mr Johnson. Uh, well, thank you very much, Kath. And yes, uh, we certainly will come out on January the 31st because we have a deal that, as I say, is oven ready. It's ready to, to go. And it's approved, as I say, not just by our friends and partners in the U EU, but by every one of the 635 Conservative candidates. And it delivers everything that we wanted from Brexit. Our whole country 
comes out entire and perfect. England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland together. And there is a sharp distinction between what we are proposing, getting Brexit done, unleashing the potential of this country, and next year, dither and delay, with another referendum on the EU, when Jeremy Corbyn, uh, Mr Corbyn, cannot tell us which side he would campaign on OK, in thank that you, referendum. Mr Johnson. Your time's up for your first response, your first response to Kath's question. Our priority is, obviously, to get it sorted. We will, within three months, negotiate a credible leave option with the European Union and within six months put that to a referendum of the British people to decide between that option of leaving whilst protecting jobs and trade and the Good Friday Agreement with Europe or remaining as full members of the European Union. That will be the choice put before the British people. The idea that the Prime Minister Boris Johnson's deal can be dealt with and finished by the end of January is such nonsense. What he's proposing is a trade deal with the United States that would take at least seven years to negotiate, whilst at the same time saying he would negotiate a special trade deal with the European Union. The two things are actually incompatible. Thank you, Mr Corbyn. So let's... <laughs> so to open the debate, um, Mr Johnson said that he claims he has a deal that is ready to go that you would have to negotiate a new deal after three years since we voted to lead the European Union. On that point, how would you respond? Well, the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, voted twice against Theresa May's deal, one time for it, then proposed his own deal, which narrowly got through the House of Commons with the support of the DUP, which is actually even worse than Theresa May's deal. He cannot protect jobs in this country on that basis. And I think it is time that we actually recognise we have to maintain a firm and good trading relationship with Europe. Otherwise, more jobs will be lost all over the country as they've already been lost because of the uncertainty. Well, we have a, a great deal that is uh, supported, as, as Mr Corbyn says, not just by uh, many members of his own party, but by the entire Conservative Party now. And 635 Conservative candidates uh, have, have backed it. And uh, what is the alternative? Uh, it's, it's under Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party to consecrate next year to uh, a three-month extension in which he would, uh, Mr Corbyn proposes to negotiate a new treaty uh, and then to put that to the people in a referendum. But we don't know, and I've asked this before, we don't know on which side Mr Corbyn would campaign. Is he going to campaign for leave can, or remain? Can we ask Mr Corbyn to respond to that? Very clearly, we will. We will negotiate. We will negotiate an agreement and we will put that alongside remain in a referendum. And our government will abide by that result. I will carry out the result of that referendum. There will be a genuine choice put before the people of Britain to make their decision Sorry, and I we will carry it out. At this election, what uh, we're asking is for a, a mandate to govern. And Mr Corbyn is asking the people for a mandate to conduct a new negotiation next year when we don't need one because we've already got a deal. I think what people need to understand is whether he believes in the deal that he is proposing to do. Does he actually want to do this deal? Because if he doesn't believe in it, or if absurdly he was then going to campaign against it, in the forthcoming Perhaps you'd like to put the question directly to fourth, Mr Corbyn. What is the point of Brussels debate. offering him the question this deal? And I, and I wonder whether he, Mr Corbyn could now tell us, are you going to campaign for leave or remain? I want to bring people together, therefore there will be a referendum in which that decision will be made by the British people and our government will abide by that decision. When you say you'll get it done, Really, Mr Johnson, you are going to embark on probably seven years of negotiations with the United States on a trade deal. You've already indicated that uh, you will allow our National Health Service to be put at risk yeah. by a trade deal with the United States. You've already indicated that you would do a Canada-style agreement, which took at least seven years to negotiate. So you're not going to get it done in a few months, and you know that perfectly well. <laughs> I'm noting, I'm noting here, of course, that we haven't heard whether you would uh, 
campaign for Remain or to leave in that situation. But it is important that we put the point that you have just made directly to Mr Johnson about this timetable. Let's have a look at the timetable. You reckon that you can get your divorce deal done and a trade deal done by December 2020. Do you stick on a pledge on that deadline of December 2020? Have you dug yourself a new yeah, abso pitch? Absolutely, because uh, people said, people, don't forget, people said that we couldn't do a new deal in three months. And people said that they would never open up the treaty. They said it was impossible to do. Actually, we succeeded. And we have a great new deal that, as I say, is oven ready, ready to go. And I, I hear what uh, Jeremy would you Corbyn mint a new coin? Would you about... mint a new coin for December 2020? Uh, I, I hear what people say about... <laughs> about... No, uh, we, we have ample time to do a fantastic uh, free trade deal uh, with our, our friends and partners in the EU because we're already in a state of perfect alignment, both for tariffs and for quotas. And we still have not heard, Julie. You will notice. There is a gla I've answered your questions. But there is a glaring lacuna still in this debate. We still don't know. I'm sorry to say that. We still don't know. We're, we're, there, there is a, a vast inhibition. Okay. Yeah, a, 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 Allow Mr. Cor Mr. Corbyn to respond Jeremy to the question Corbyn from Mr. Johnson. Is going to campaign for the deal he proposes to do, or is he going to invite his Labour colleagues to destroy well, let's, let's the, allow Mr. the contraption to respond to that. that he's created? Thank you, Mr. Is Johnson. He, let's that's that's my what I've said, and it's very clear, very clear. Three months to negotiate, six months for a referendum, and that will bring that process to an end. What we know of the government's proposals, what we know of what Mr. Johnson has done, is a series of secret meetings with the United States in which they were proposing to open up our NHS markets, as they call them, to American companies. Freedom of Information Act request was made in order to find out what happened at these meetings. That's what happened at these meetings. Every single line of this document redacted out. A document here, a document here of US-UK negotiations, summary of specific okay. negotiating Let's objectives, allow Mr. Mr. full Johnson. market access for US products to our national health service. No. You're going to sell Johnson, our national health point. service out to the United States and Big Pharma. This is, this is an absolute... This is an absolute invention. It is completely untrue. There are no circumstances, whatever, in which this government or any Conservative government will put the NHS on the table in any trade negotiation. Our NHS will never be for sale. And okay. I'm amazed how often this comes up. The only reason that it comes up is because Mr Corbyn is trying to conceal the void at the heart of his Brexit policy and refusing to answer the question of which side... <laughs> Which side he would take? Okay. Because the public still, the public thank have you. a right. The public okay, have a thank right you, Mr. to know. Corbyn. Just very, just very I've, briefly, I've Mr. made the position clear. We will have a referendum. We will have negotiation, <laughs> and we will abide by that result. It's the we've, British people yes, we've heard that. who will thank make you, Mr. that Corbyn. decision. We've heard that. And very, I, I do think, very though, briefly, we just that need since, to move on to another question since on Brexit. the Prime Minister has claimed thank the you. NHS is not under threat, we're going to come to the then, NHS very shortly. Did his government agree with the US? that there should be, in the terms of negotiations, full market access totally. for United States medical companies into our national right. health service. Totally. OK, we're going to talk about the NHS a little further a little later. Um, and we're now going to go to our next questioner, staying with the issue of Brexit. John Firth wants to ask about the possible threat to the union, which could mean the breakup of the United Kingdom. John. Is the union worth sacrificing for Brexit? Thank you very much indeed for that. Is the union worth sacrificing for Brexit, Mr Corbyn? Well, I hope the union is not going to be broken up or, or sacrificed in this way, but the agreements that um, the Prime Minister negotiated, or he's put, no, negotiated, he's put towards the um, to Parliament, was about creating a border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, creating a different customs arrangement for Northern Ireland with the rest of Ireland, having promised to the Democratic Unionist Party he would never do that. Clearly, there is an issue there. Clearly, there are issues all around about this deal that he's proposed. And I do think that this deal is damaging to this country, damaging to the uh, rights we have at work and consumer protection and environmental protection in this country and very damaging to manufacturing industry jobs all over Thank you. Britain, some of which have already you, gone Corbyn. because Thank of you. uncertainty over Brexit. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Corbyn. Mr. Well, Johnson. We have a, a deal that keeps the whole of the UK 
together as we come out of the EU. And of course, Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party, uh, be in no doubt about it, in order to secure power and the keys to number 10, are going to do a deal, and they probably already have done a deal, with Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP to form a Corbyn-Sturgeon coalition. And the price of that deal, the price of Nicola Sturgeon's support, let's be in no doubt, she's made it absolutely clear, would be a second referendum on the union with Scotland. I don't think we need another referendum on the union with Scotland. I've ruled it out. We had one in 2014. The people of Scotland voted very substantially to stay in the most successful political partnership of the last 300 years. Why put this country, this great country, through another referendum on Scotland? And why have a second referendum? OK, Just thank you very president. much indeed. And thank why you, have thank a second you. That's referendum time, on the time up on your, your first response to that. Thank you very much indeed. So just as a quick, uh, you know, set uh, something down in front of us, gentlemen, for clarity, is the union more important than Brexit, yes or no? I, just, oh, I think I ought to be able to reply to this nonsense. Will you be able to Mr. reply? Johnson, I'd just, like just like to have the idea that there's going to be a coalition, coalition between Labour and the SNP. There's not going to be a coalition right. between Labour and anybody else. There are no deals that have been done, and there will be no okay. deals that are done. OK. For clarity, is the union more important from, from, than Brexit, Mr Corbyn? Yes. Our country is obviously very, very important and we have to bring this business to a close and that's Thank why you. we're proposing a trade deal with Europe or Thank staying you. in, one Mr. or the other, uh, as a way of bringing this issue to a close. Thank you, Mr Johnson. Mr, Mr. Let's, let's be, the, the union is, of course, the most important thing. Just to answer the question uh, straight up. The union, and it's a fantastic thing, I, 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 I'm, I'm proud to be okay. not only Prime Minister, but also Minister for the Union. Okay. Now, now, let's be clear that uh, Jeremy Corbyn has said that he's open to a second referendum on Scotland early in the lifetime of the next parliament, if he's head of the government. And Nicola Sturgeon has made it absolutely clear that the price of her support will be a referendum on Scotland in 2020. So you're going to have a year of two referendums, one on Scotland and one... If okay, you have let's a allow Mr Corbyn well, to respond. Um, one we'll on Scotland that. and the, one on Mr. the Mr Corbyn, if you, do the have to, if, case, if, you have to, if you do have to get to a point where you have to make a deal with the SNP, Nicola Sturgeon has already said, don't pick up the phone unless you can guarantee a second independence referendum. Can you rule it out before the end of the first year? I've said the there would be no deal with the SNP, there would be no support for a Scottish referendum in the early years of the next Labour government, because I want to invest in Scotland and give Scotland the 70 billion it needs in capital so, investment. So you can, so you and we, and if the SNP leadership out? choose to put the Conservative government back Is in office it with its austerity programme, that's you their choice. He was going to rule that. I listened very, I, Julie, I listened, I listened very carefully, as I always do, to Mr Corbyn. I didn't hear him say he was going to rule out a referendum on Scotland. Did, did you? Uh, we're, we're ruling out a referendum. Uh, it's perfectly clear. It's perfectly clear that the price of Nicola Sturgeon's support for the chaotic coalition that thank he you. would comprise OK, thank you. Let's allow referendum. him to respond. Can you rule well, it out? There's nine point. years of chaotic coalitions Could, already. Okay. Can I turn, please, to the issue of Northern Ireland? In your hustings for your leadership uh, race, Mr Johnson, you said, under no circumstances, whatever happens, will I allow the EU or anyone else to create any division down the Irish Sea. You spoke at another conference a year ago saying that that would damage the fabric of the union. And now here we have your deal that you've presented to Parliament. Absolutely. And that deal means that the whole of the UK can come out and do free trade deals around the world and do a great deal with our EU friends and partners, Northern Ireland included. What the people of Northern Ireland don't got a know... trade deal the down the Irish... No, the tra trade no, border down the Irish not Sea. All, not at all. The, uh, Northern Ireland is part of the customs territory of the UK. It's, it's there in, in black and white. And what the people of Northern Ireland do not know, and, they can, and part of our tariff schedules and, and everything else, what the people of Northern Ireland do not know, and nor do the people of Ireland, is what kind of deal Jeremy Corbyn proposes to do. Okay. And he's got a hundred of his, his MPs, and we still don't know, by the way, uh, what he proposes to okay. do, nor whether he is in favour right. of it I mean, or against all right. it. Okay. We, have a, we, have a, we, have we have a hundred of his MPs who have already Thank said Thank that you. they would vote against it. Most of the shadow cabinet. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Deal. Corbyn. The only problem. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Johnson. A quick response. The only to Mr. problem with what Mr. Johnson just said is that he said exactly the opposite when he spoke to a DUP conference. You said there would be no border down the Irish Sea. And well, there is. No, on the contrary, the whole. On the contrary, the whole of the UK comes out entire and perfect, as I have said. Uh, we do 
free trade deals together, we take back control together, we have our own uh, okay. immigration so why system, have you for said instance, then that, we can yeah. take back control of our borders. And, uh, and one of the many mysteries about Mr Corbyn's deal okay. is would he take back control of immigration, All right, well, we are uh, which staying. people voted for. We are going to stay we, on we are the going to have an Australian-style points Thank you, Mr Johnson. System. We're going to stay what on the issue policy? of Brexit. Thank you, Mr Johnson. We're going to stay on this issue of Brexit. And underlying this whole issue, of course, is the question of trust and leadership. We have had hundreds of questions on this. And with that in mind, it's over to Fahad Saeed. This whole nation will have watched you both throughout this campaign in utter despair. At the heart of all of this, is one very simple question. How can we trust you? <laughs> under, under your leadership, the debate has become toxic and degraded with an appalling level of lies and childish abuse. How can this nation, how can this nation trust you to have the personal integrity and individual strength of character to look after our country's interest, rescue us from this mess, and bring us back together. Thank you very much indeed. Is it fine? Uh, right, thank fine. Uh, well, thank you very much for uh, a, a very important question. And uh, look, on the issue of trust, I think that trust in politics and, and in Parliament has been corroded. And that is the most fundamental reason for that is because Parliament asked the people to vote on membership of the EU, and then Parliament has repeatedly refused to honour that promise, to respect the views of the people. And I'm afraid that Jeremy Corbyn, Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party are now blocking Brexit. The way I think, to re it's absolutely true, the way to restore trust in politics is to get Brexit done and move forward. We have a great deal that enables us to do it, I'm unclear Thank as you. to why it's necessary you, to spend another year okay, that's in a debate we've... about Brexit, which is, as far Thank as you. Says, is corrosive. Thank you device. very much. Time is up. Mr Corbyn, your first response. Trust, trust is something that has to be earned. And as a, a public representative, you have to listen to the people that elected you in the first place. And you have to listen to people all over the country in all walks of life. I spend a great deal of time travelling around the country listening to people be they chief executives, workers, people sweeping the street, or the homeless. Everybody you meet knows something you don't know. Leadership is about listening to people, trying to put their ideas into practice, and finally come to a decision in which you can take a country and our society forward. My style of leadership is actually to listen to people and try and bring consensus together in my own party and obviously within Parliament, because Thank the you. issues we face of division okay. in our society do have to be conquered. Thank They're you. not going to be conquered by dictat, but only by okay. listening Thank and you taking us much. forward that way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Farhad put his finger right on something very specific in this question. How can the nation trust you to have the personal integrity and the individual strength of character? Mr Corbyn, how would you respond to that particular well, point? I think we have to represent people, take decisions and be honest with people about why you're taking the decisions that you are and how to bring people together. My whole strategy on Brexit has been to recognise whether you voted Remain and live in a private rented accommodation and in poor and in London, voted Leave and you live in the North and are in the same situation, your issues are the same. The problems of poverty, inequality and division within our society. Bring people together, don't divide them. I would just say to Farhan, look at what I have said I'm going to do as a politician and look what I've, and look what I've delivered, whether it was as Mayor of London or uh, now as Prime Minister. I said that we would put 20,000 uh, more police officers on the streets of our city and we are uh, of our country and we are recruiting them now. I said we'd upgrade 20 hospitals and have 40 new hostels. That programme is going ahead. We are uplifting funding for education across the country. We're lifting up the living wage by its biggest ever expansion. Okay, but this, and this is about... I said we would deliver Brexit and we will deliver Does, Brexit. Thank you. But we can We're only do it about... if Sorry. we clear Forgive this me. parliamentary blockage. Forgive me, Mr Johnson, but this is about... <laughs> but this is about personal integrity and individual character. Does the truth matter in this election? I think it does. 
and I, I think it very important. I think it very important to hear from... I've been very clear about the deal that I've done. There it is. It's in black and white. You can read it. We don't know. We don't know what Mr Corbyn is it's proposing. Not just a, it's he not won't, just about He won't Brexit come Brexit clean. He won't come clean with the electorate about what he is Mr. proposing Mr. to do. Corbyn, nor will he come allow clean Mr. Corbyn about respond, whether please. he would Thank support you, Mr. Johnson, that deal Mr. or not. I think we've been very clear on our policies in relation to Europe. I think we're also very clear on all the other policies that will be unveiled in our manifesto on Thursday, and they will be accompanied by a fully costed grey book with it. So every pledge we make will be fully funded because I believe the British people deserve that knowledge, deserve to know what we're going to do, and deserve a government that is actually not going to preside over rising homelessness, increasing inequality and chaos in the NHS. Okay. Instead, they're going to invest <laughs> in the future of this country. Gentlemen, will you take some personal responsibility for the way the debate has unfolded in politics in this country? We know, of course, Mr Johnson, that people point to the fact that you promised 40 times on record we'd be out of the EU on October the 31st. Um, one of your former chief of staffs from your time uh, as London mayor said that you'd betrayed every person you'd ever had any dealings with. And we know, Mr Corbyn, there are big questions about anti-Semitism within uh, Labour, for example. We know that... The Board of Deputies of British Jews have said you and your allies have been responsible for turning a once great party into, an anti uh, into a cesspit of anti-Semitism, were their words. Can you both take some responsibility for the way the debate has turned in this country? Anti-Semitism is an absolute evil and scourge within our society. <laughs> Racism in any form is a scourge in our society. I have taken action in my party where anyone has committed any anti-Semitic acts or made any anti-Semitic statements, they are either suspended or expelled from the party, and we've investigated every single case. We do take this very, very seriously indeed, because I do not want to live in a society where racism is rife. I understand and recognise the history, the desperate history of the Jewish people in the 20th century, which came about from a, an unrestriction of anti-Semitism in the 1920s. We've got to stand up against Thank racism the... in any form in our society. Thank you. And on the question, and on the question of telling the truth in politics, Mr Johnson, your response to that, the points that I put you on those issues. Well, I, I, I'm just listening with open mouth to what uh, Jeremy Corbyn had to say Could about, you the uh, point? Uh, about you uh, what the he's point done to stamp out anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, because it abs it's, I'm afraid it's a complete failure of leadership, what's happened in the Labour Party with anti-Semitism. But the failure of leadership is even worse when you look at what is happening on their Brexit policy, because uh, I'm, I'm okay. afraid, and I let Mr. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson before what you the go people of this country this. want to hear, okay, what they you. want to hear is clarity about whether he believes okay. in the deal this was that he is proposing to we, do. We have and that heard your points deeply, on that, Mr. That Johnson. This was a question about personal the integrity. In Brussels who will be doing that deal. This was a per question from Fahad about personal integrity and character. So let's just try to take stock before we go for the ad break. There are many people and many politicians, indeed, that feel that the nastiness of political debate in this country has simply got out of control. Will you two tonight look at one another and no matter who becomes Prime Minister, make a gesture to improve things today? Could you make a pledge and promise that the whoever becomes Prime Minister improves the, in the Parliament, nature of debate sorry, in this country? I apologize. The debate in Parliament before, the, before Parliament was dissolved was vicious and horrible, and some terrible remarks were made, particularly to and about women MPs. I asked the Speaker to convene a meeting okay. of all party leaders. Mr Johnson sent a representative there, we, and we agreed thank you. that this was unacceptable conduct. Will and you, I absolutely agree with that. Thank you. Will you both make a pledge to improve things? Um, and perhaps, gentlemen, perhaps, gentlemen, could you shake, shake hands to make a pledge to improve politics? And a gesture, a gesture. Look, um, I, Thank you I, very much indeed. I, 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 I strongly agree with what Jeremy... Uh, Thank you. Uh, well, then you, you might need to make some other got statements a, as well. OK, we'll we've got later. a pledge from you both there. After the break, a promise from us. We will move on from Brexit to other issues this evening. Next, on Johnson versus Corbyn, we'll be talking about issues like the NHS, the economy and possibly Prince Andrew. <laughs>
Well, welcome back to Johnson versus Corbyn, the ITV debate. In a moment, we'll take our next question. But remember, this is just the first part of an ITV political double bill tonight. At 10 o'clock tonight, we'll have the ITV election interviews when the Lib Dem leader, Joe Swinson, the SNP's Nicola Sturgeon, the Brexit Party's Nigel Farage and Green Party co-leader, Sean Berry, will all be interviewed live by Nina Hossein. Back to our debate. Let's have our next question. And it comes from Omar Shahab and it's on the NHS. Omar. I'm a hospital doctor and I see firsthand the unsustainable pressure on the NHS. Elderly patients stuck on um, trolleys and corridors, unacceptably long waiting times for operations. Aside from pledging more money for the health service, how will you ensure that the health service can meet future demands? And would that involve any privatisation? Dr. Shah, thank you very much indeed for first response, Mr. Corbyn. I think the NHS is a wonderful and brilliant institution, but it is suffering under the most incredible pressure. The staff are unbelievably stressed by the job they have to do and the insufficiency of facilities to deal with it. There are 33,000 nurse vacancies at the moment in the NHS. I'll give a story. Yesterday, a woman, a friend of mine, died at 6.30 yesterday morning from secondary breast cancer. The day before, she'd gone to hospital at the recommendation of her GP in order to get urgent treatment. She waited eight hours. The nurses that were trying to help her were unable to get anyone to see her because they were under such strain and stress. And so she recorded a video saying, please, in my memory, make sure nobody else goes through this pain. We've got to fund our NHS properly and fill the vacancies and make sure it's there for all time. It's one of the most civilised things you. about this country. Thank you, Mr. Corbyn. Well, thank you, Omar. And I, I agree passionately with... Uh, what uh, you've said about the NHS, it's absolutely vital that we support it. And it is one of the single most beautiful and brilliant things about Britain and about our society. And uh, we are determined to fund it, not just now, but for the long term. In, in this One Nation Conservative government, we're putting record sums in, £34 billion. Uh, we are, uh, as I said earlier on, we're not just upgrading uh, 20 hospitals, but we are building 40 new hospitals as a result of the decisions taken by this government. We will invest in GPs, we'll have uh, tens of thousands more nurses, 6,000 more GPs, and uh, our objective is to have a health service that is not just uh, better for Thank doctors you. and nurses, but better for patients as well. Thank we you. We can Thank achieve you, that Johnson. only if Thank we have you. a strong economy. Thank you. And, and I'm afraid... Uh, which, which is what we Thank do. Thank you very have much indeed. Moment. That's and your time would, is up. That would be a question. huge Thank mistake. You, Mr. Johnson, your time is up. Mr. Corbyn. Well, the problem is that the A and E performance is now at its worst ever. There are four million people waiting for operations. There are all the vacancies that have not been filled within the NHS. The Health and Social Care Act allows the privatisation of services. And indeed, we have the nonsense of our National Health Service being taken to court by private operators because they didn't get contracts from it. Let's end the privatisation within the NHS and instead have a fully funded NHS for all people. We are investing tax. We are investing. It's a specific 30, question on privatisation and private we're not provision. privatising the NHS, nor do we have any. Of course, we are investing 30. And no, no, nor will the NHS, just let me repeat this point, nor will the NHS be ever up uh, for sale in any negotiation. Let me repeat that uh, point and, and, and lay this myth to rest. Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue. We will continue to fund the NHS massively as we are. We can only do so because we have a strong and dynamic economy, which is, and by the way, don't forget that under Labour, they ruined the public finances. Uh, they did. Uh, Liam Byrne said himself there was, there was no money left. The economy has grown every year in the last nine years. And what could be more ruinous, what could be more ruinous for the NHS than a crackpot plan for a four-day week, which would add massively, would add massively okay, okay, to the, to the burdens, Mr. not just Thank of the you. NHS, but of every public Thank you, service Mr. Johnson. in the Mr. country. Mr. Corbyn, respond to this. The, and this is the proposal for a four-day week for workers across the economy within 10 it years is of the about, government. It is about reducing the working week all across the economy, paid for by 
productivity increases all across. Britain works longer, <laughs> longer than most. But, well, people need to be aware that actually a shorter working week is probably a good thing for their health and well-being, but as is decent pay. What I would also that. say to Mr Johnson is that his proposal for 40 new hospitals, which he grandly announced in July, turns out to be six reconfigurations without any clarity as to where they're actually going to be. OK, Mr Johnson. Well, well that is totally untrue. We're putting... Uh, we're doing 20 upgrades. Oh. Uh, and yes, it is true that we are starting uh, with six, but the seed funding has got in. So where did the 40, 40 come from? 40 new <laughs> hospitals. And the investment, the investment is going in now. And the only reason that investment can be made is because we have a robust economy. And let me get, make another point. The single biggest threat to our economy and our ability to fund the NHS is our failure to get Brexit done. Okay, well, ask we're, the, we're, ask we the government that it's absolutely true. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. It's Thank hanging you, over this Thank country you, Mr. Johnson. and over this economy. I want it's to, stopping I need, investment coming I know coming you in. want to return to, to Brexit, Brexit, Mr. Brexit, Mr. Johnson, but in this specific moment, we are talking about the NHS. On the issue of privatisation and private provision with the NHS, sometimes it is there, provided by organisations that are not profit. It has extended capacity within the NHS. Will you rule out any privatisation in the NHS, any private provision within the NHS the, under... The, the principle NHS. is to ensure that all people that work in the NHS are employed by the NHS on similar contracts across the NHS. The internal market so must, go, must go within the NHS and what is happening <laughs> is privatisation of services, of services across the NHS and I think that is very, very damaging to the whole principles of the NHS. We also have problems of social care, which are not being addressed either, and there are about a million okay. people waiting for social care okay. at the present time. Thank you, Mr. On, on that specific point, one quick answer, Mr Johnson. Will there be a policy on social care in your manifesto, yes or no? Uh, yes, there will, and we think that nobody should uh, pay for their cost of their social care by Thank selling you. their home, and everybody should have dignity and security in their old age. Thank you very much indeed, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your uh, responses on that subject. Now, of course, you will have heard that both have made significant spending pledges over the past couple of weeks and not just on the NHS. And Beverly Davis from Newport has a question related to this. Beverly. I'm a care home laundry assistant earning minimum wage. I've worked all my life and have seen the real impact of austerity, which neither of you have. Now, you say there's plenty to spend. I'm concerned because neither of you have ever had to worry about money. You throw it away on silly election giveaways. What can you say to reassure me? Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Mr Corbyn. Well, we've had austerity for nine years in this country. We've had a growth of billionaires in this country. We've had a growth of extreme poverty in this country. We've had a growth of personal debt from people trying to look after children, look after older people. I think the first thing has to be an increase in wages by having a £10 an hour living wage for all people, an end to zero hours, an end to zero hours contract and an investment strategy across the country that does give us an increase in manufacturing jobs all across Britain, which we're not having at the present time. I think this election is a turning point in the way in which going to, we're going to manage our economy in the future. Thank you, Mr Corbyn. Mr. Johnson. Well, to, to, answer, to answer the question directly about uh, how we're handling public finances in this electoral period, I, I, I would just point out that I have shelved a plan to cut corporation tax, uh, saving... Uh, it's already the lowest in Europe. He would whack it up to the highest in, in Europe. No. But we've, we've, we've shelved that cut. That puts, uh, gives us the ability to put another £6 billion into uh, the NHS and other priorities. And we will do that. We can do that because we have a strong economy. And what worries me about this country at the moment is that we are going to continue with this pointless paralysis. I'm, I, have no, no, I have no hesitation in repeating this point. If we go on with more deadlock and division next year, Thank you. and fail to get Brexit done, then the economy Thank will you. suffer. And that is, the, that is the reality. But, but Beverly's, question, Beverly's question was very specific. She's saying now there seems to be plenty to spend. She is concerned that because neither of you have had to worry about money, you'll throw it away on silly election giveaways. Can we have a pledge here from both of you? Simply, is austerity over in the United Kingdom, Mr Corbyn? We will, we will end austerity. I'm absolutely clear about that. Yes, because it's, it's so brutal on the lives of so many people.
paper. So, of, of, the of, last election... of course, and I believe in spending, investing massively in our public services because we support, and which is so, what we are doing, but because we support so a dynamic wealth-creating sector. And Thank that's you. why it's a good idea, actually, to believe in business, to support business, to support the wealth-creating year, sector of the, the economy. Last election, and gentlemen. Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party have actually said that they want to overthrow capitalism and to destroy the basis of wealth creation in this country. I have to say, I think that would be disastrous Mr. Corbyn. for this country. We will, over a period, over a, over a parliament, increase corporation tax to around the levels it was in 2010 in order to reinvest properly in education, in order to pay for the ending of university tuition fees, to give every student a decent chance of going to university and life. And we will... We start to redress the grotesque levels of imbalance in our society. We have, we're a society of billionaires and the very poor, neither of which are right. Both of you are proposing, both of you gentle, gentlemen are proposing extraordinary levels of borrowing. At the last election, we were told by your predecessor, Mr Johnson, that there was no magic money tree. Have you found a magic money tree, Mr Johnson? And have you found perhaps more than one of them, Mr Corbyn? No, we're, we're, we're operating... Money forest, he's got. Uh, we're, we're, operating, we're operating within strict fiscal discipline, and uh, yes, of course, uh, we're investing now in the NHS and we're investing in our policing and investing in education because we have the fiscal headroom to do so. We're also going to do fantastic things for this country with infrastructure, with uniting the whole country, uh, with, uh, with better high speed rail, uh, with telecommunications. Uh, if we're going to do fantastic things for this country. You can only do that. That okay. if interest rates are low. Yes. And the rate at which, okay. they, the rate at which Labour let's, would borrow okay. would push up interest okay, rates allow, for every you. household in the country. Thank the, you. A response from the that reality, on that particular point. The reality of austerity has been to hit the, hit the funds of local authorities, has meant the life chances of children have been damaged by underfunding schools, head teachers going out collecting money in order to keep a school going, young people with no after-school clubs, no youth centre to go to, and the levels of dislocation and poverty in so many areas of Britain, deliberately, because of austerity, must and will okay. change. Yes, okay. we will invest in Thank education, you. we will invest in housing, Thank we will invest much. in health. Of course, all of this... All of this, gentlemen... All of this, gentlemen, is, of course, predicated on what sort of Brexit deal either of you might be able to achieve. Um, but we're going to move on to some uh, other subject matters now in our debate, something a little different. We've had hundreds and hundreds of questions from ITV viewers, and now we're going to have a quick-fire section on a wide variety of issues to try to learn a little bit more about where the leaders stand on those other issues. So if you could say in a few words as possible, perhaps even a yes or no, gentlemen, <laughs> given that we're looking at the clock, that How would... How do you define a few words? Well, just, just editing, one, two, or just give us a clear, pre uh, precise answer. The first question is, Sue from Leeds, is the monarchy fit for purpose? Jeremy Corbyn. Needs a bit of improvement. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Johnson. The institution of the monarchy is beyond reproach. Is, is, is Prince Andrew fit for purpose? Before we discuss Prince Andrew, I think we should discuss the victims that are there because of what Epstein was doing. And uh, I think there are very, very serious questions that must be answered and nobody should be above the law, but the primary position ought to be the proper treatment of those people who are victims of the most appalling behaviour by, apparently, Epstein and many others. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Johnson. <laughs> I, I think all our sympathies would, should be, obviously, with uh, the victims of, of Jeffrey Epstein and uh, the, the, the law must, must certainly take its course. Of course. Thank you very much indeed, of course. And uh, we know that we've heard from Prince Andrew this week. And uh, uh, we'll move on now to our next question from Andrew from Liverpool. Do you agree that climate change is the biggest issue in our country today? Mr Johnson. I think it's a colossal issue for the entire world. And the UK, the UK is, meeting, is meeting that challenge with the most 
far-reaching ambition to get to carbon neutral by 2050. And uh, I know you're not one to say this, but we so need to get no Brexit it's done <laughs> it's in, order, in order, in okay, order to you. deliver on those what? priorities. OK, Mr Corbyn, is it the big issue? Is it the biggest issue? It's the most massive issue. issue facing the whole world when the poorest people in the poorest countries lose out because of lose out because of flooding and unusual weather patterns, when we have unusual weather patterns in this country, okay. when we have extreme levels of air pollution, we have to have a green industrial revolution where okay. we invest for okay. the future in sustainable industries and jobs and prevent the continuing damage to our natural world and Thank our you environment. Very. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Which current, this is a question from Tony from Bristol, which current foreign leader do you most admire, Mr Johnson? Which current foreign leader? Well, uh, I, I, it's a very good question. I think I, I would like the EU 27, all of them, uh, because uh, <laughs> they did me a fantastic deal, uh, which enables us to come out of the EU. And I have yet to hear, and I'm going to ask him again. Okay, thank uh, but you. I, I, I've yet to hear what thank the leader of the opposition would do okay. with his deal I'm, and whether he campaigned to leave or remain. I'm, I feel obliged to ask this question. Mr Johnson, Mr Corbyn. I, I think the person I admire most in, in the world at the present time is the General Secretary of the United Nations, Guterres, trying to bring the world together. OK, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> OK, we are... Didn't get quite through as many as we thought we might, uh, gentlemen. But uh, we're going to have, uh, before our concluding statements, perhaps time for one more short seasonal question. And this is from Ben West in Kent. I think we should all learn to be a little more, um, a little more kind to each other, including those we disagree with. With this in mind, and leaving politics aside for a moment, what present would you leave under the Christmas tree for each other this year? <laughs> gentlemen. OK, leaving politics aside, what gift would you lead, leave for Mr Johnson under the Christmas tree? Well, well, I know Mr Johnson likes a good read. So what I would probably leave under the tree for him would be A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And he could, <laughs> and he could then understand how nasty Scrooge was. Thank you. <laughs> Mr Johnson. Uh, well, I think what I, I would probably leave a, a copy of, uh, uh, since you want a, a literary... Uh, effort, uh, a copy of uh, my brilliant Brexit deal, uh, <laughs> which, uh, which allows us to come back. And I, and I, and I, and I, will, I will wait. Maybe, maybe by next year we will Just be able to see his own non-political, Mr uh, Brexit, Johnson. Uh, non-political. Well, 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 I think Mr Corbyn, I, he, Mr Corbyn shares my love of, okay. uh, of plants and trees. I think maybe some um, One of your little damsons. cardboard buses, maybe. maybe some, some, da damsons. some damson jack. Lovely. Some damson, damson, damson jack. Damson jack. OK, damson gentlemen, jack. thank you very much indeed for that. He doesn't even want my damson jack. <laughs> thank you. A fascinating 50 minutes of debate. I will now ask Jeremy Corbyn and Boris Johnson for a very short concluding statement. Mr Corbyn, first. You've seen tonight the real choice you'll have in this election. And your voice must be heard. If you haven't registered to vote, please go online and do it now. This is a once-in-a-generation election to end privatisation and give the National Health Service the funding it needs, to give people the final say and get Brexit sorted, to tackle the climate emergency that threatens our futures, to invest in good jobs in every region and nation of our country. I ask that you vote for hope and vote for Labour on the 12th of December. Mr Johnson. Our, our choice is very simple. We can get Brexit done or we can spend another groundhog year with another referendum when Mr Corbyn, you've heard tonight, cannot answer the fundamental question. Is he, is he for remain or leave? And what price would he pay to secure Nicola Sturgeon's support to enter number 10? And if he can't answer those questions tonight, I don't think he's fit to lead our country. So let's, let's, end, let's end the dither and delay the deadlock and the divisions. And if we have a working majority, a uh, conservative majority, I pledge we will have a parliament that works for you, that focuses on the NHS and the cost of living, because when we get Brexit done by January the 31st, we will go forward Thank you. as a united and confident nation that has shown our faith okay. in the judgment of Out our Out of time. People. Mr Johnson, Mr Corbyn,
That is the end of the first part of our live political programming tonight. An hour from now, we'll hear from four more party leaders on what they think matters at this election. That's the ITV election interviews. But for now, from South Salford, from all of us here, good night. So, the first head-to-head -head debate has made the history books, but now the battle over how they'll be written. Welcome to the ITV debate unspun. We're live backstage here in the spin room where both camps watch their candidates up there on the big screen and are now bending the ears of journalists trying to put the polish on their leaders' performance. We'll go and speak to them in just a moment, but first, we want your snap verdict. Head over to at ITV News on Twitter where I am posting a poll Right now, tell us who you think won tonight's debate, Jeremy Corbyn or Boris Johnson. We'll leave that unscientific poll up for 10 minutes or so and bring you the results later in the show. Right, let us see what everyone in the room made of that debate. So just to give you... A, oh, Michael Go, what was that? A victory for Boris? Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. And I hear, you were, I hear you were playing Jeremy Corbyn in the rehearsals as well. No, I was watching that debate and there was only one Prime Minister on that stage and that was Boris Johnson. Jeremy Corbyn, when he was asked ten times how he would campaign in his Brexit referendum that he wants to have, simply couldn't answer the question. He couldn't say whether or not he would back leave or remain. That is not leadership. That is a vacuum. It's also the case that he said that we're going to have another referendum, as well as the EU referendum, on Scotland. He made it perfectly clear... Well, that no, we're going he to ruled have... it out in the first few years of uh, a Labour government. And look, Boris no, no, Johnson had his problems. Clear. Clear. There was, there, no, there was... no, 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 no. He was perfectly clear that he was going to accept a referendum in Scotland. And it's also the case that he made it perfectly clear that we're going to have a four-day week in the NHS as well, putting patient safety at risk and diverting money away Michael, from helping yeah. those does, does who not, need does it, it not, does, does it not worry you, though, that there was open laughter from the audience when Boris Johnson talked about telling the truth and there trusting politics. There was open politics. laughter at Jeremy Corbyn's failure to answer the questions on Brexit. People want Brexit done. They want an end to paralysis. The reason we're having this election is because we have a broken parliament and people want progress. We've okay. got a great Brexit deal. What we had from Jeremy Corbyn tonight was a terrifying display of intellectual vacuity. He simply has no answer to the essential question, does he want in any new referendum that he says he's going to secure, does he want us to be inside the European Union or out? Okay, okay, okay. No right. answers, Michael Go, no leadership, thank you for joining us no live chance. on ITV. Right, we better let him do a few more interviews. I hadn't quite expected that snap reaction there. Um, let's try and squeeze through here, through the scrum. There are other parties here in the spin room tonight too, of course. So you've got the Green Party. Uh, over here. Good evening to you, Natalie Good Bennett. Good Hi. evening to you. Uh, what did you make of the debate? Um, well, it was very, very loud. There was a lot of shouting and, of course, mo a great deal of it was coming from Boris Johnson. Yeah, it was really noticeable. You looked at that. I mean, I've been chaired by Julie Entringham. I know she's an enormously strong chair. Of course, you took part in the debates in 2015. In exactly, that's right. And, you know, it was good that she was there because she was eventually bringing Boris Johnson under control. But he was trying to, all the time, go over his time. He was trying to shout over the top mm -hmm. of her. So I think, you know, the real mood of that is Jeremy Corbyn came out as, you know, speaking from the heart, like when he was talking about the NHS, you know, it was, it was very loud and I'm not sure it really shed a lot of light okay. on anything very much. But, right. you know, it was definitely, I would call it for Jeremy Corbyn. OK, thank you very much. Of course, you've got a chance to take part in the debate later this after, uh, Sean, this evening. Sean Berry will, Sean be, on Berry will be on that programme at 10 o'clock tonight. Right, let's go and see what some of the journalists thought of that debate. So these are where, these seats are where all the lobby journalists are currently filing... Their verdict quickly ahead of their nine o'clock deadline, isn't it for you guys? Nine o'clock. Yes, around that. Yeah. Right, Nicola Bartlett from the Mirror. What did you make of it? Uh, I think it, it was a surprise actually. Um, Jeremy Corbyn seemed a lot more comfortable in that setup. Do you think so? Perhaps anticipated, and they both seem to be. Um, it, it seemed very different from when they square off over the dispatch box. Uh, a few jokes there from, from Boris Johnson, but also a few from Jeremy Corbyn. And there were some lines which did seem to land better than others. This coalition, um, the, the accusation that Jeremy Corbyn would go into coalition, yeah. the coalition of chaos, and Jeremy Corbyn sort of quick as a flash said, well, we've already had nine years of that. You know, conversely, there was a lot of laughter when he talked about his Brexit position, saying it was clear, the audience laughed at that because they don't think it's clear clear at all. So it's, it's difficult to, to kind of, 
you know, see who won. So or... it's kind of a score draw then, in a your li- view? A little bit. I mean, I, I did love the exchange at the end. I mean, brilliant question about Christmas presents. <laughs> yeah. uh, and Boris Johnson sounded almost plaintive when he said, oh, you know, Jeremy Corbyn won't even take my jam. Um, but, you know, that sometimes it's those unexpected questions that, that kind of show the true, uh, yeah. the true personalities. Yeah. OK, all right, Nicola, thank you. And Matt Dathan from The Sun. Hi. Who do you reckon won? Uh, neither, to be honest. Probably the audience. Uh, I think we, uh, we saw a lot of... Um, or Julie. Um, yeah, no, Julie, of course. It's, <laughs> Julie I, wins ITV every day. always wins, yeah. <laughs> no, I think we saw a lot of the public's anger at the way that British politics has been run for the last three years, to be honest. Um, we had two audience members who really kind of uh, showed that anger and... Uh, yeah, the trouble. <laughs> But it was much more conciliatory, um, I thought it would be. Uh, they oh, shook yeah. hands at one point, uh, pledging to you know, improve the quality of debate. I very much doubt that will happen, but we'll have to wait and see. OK, all right, Matt, Nicola, thank you very much. Let's head back up the room now, asking our cameraman to do a bit of a shuffle here. It's uh, actually really rammed in this spin room this time. We think this is the busiest the spin room has been since... The 2015 debates, with interest from around the world, actually, even interest from as far flung as Israel, um, journalists from across the UK, of course, have all come here to listen to the various spin on uh, on the debate from the various parties. Who else have we got here? So we've got Tom Brake from the Lib Dems over there doing a bit of spinning on behalf of Joe Swinson, who will also be appearing on our programme at 10 o'clock uh, tonight. And uh, over here is Lee Kane, head of communications for uh, number 10. Um, and uh, let's get some reaction, some political reaction too from our guests uh, who've kindly uh, agreed to join me this evening. We've got Dawn Butler from Labour and Priti Patel from Hello, the Conservative good Party. Good evening to both of you. A pretty packed spin room tonight. Um, first questions first. Jeremy Corbyn, I think fair to say, Dawn Butler, went into this as the underdog. Do you think he's not emerged as the underdog too? I think he's emerged as a man of integrity, a man of honesty, a man who's got the country's best interests at heart, a man who's got the policies, the turning point of our country. This is the most important election in a generation. And I think Boris Johnson came across as a deeply dishonest man. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn did struggle to land his point quite a few times, though. Do you really think he's managed to close the gap tonight? Well, it wasn't about landing points. This it's not what about, debate's all this about. This wasn't about sound bites. This is about telling the country what a Labour government will deliver for the country. Boris Johnson was just full of bluster. Everything he tried to sort of cloak an umbrella in, like, a fake Brexit debate. It's just pure fake news. Boris Johnson talked about the NHS with compassion. He talked about nurses and doctors. He talked about schools. He talked about all the policies that's going to make the difference in real people's lives. Boris Johnson isn't even in touch with his own feelings, let alone the rest of the country. Is that true, Pretty Patel? Well, absolutely not. And quite frankly, what we saw this evening, there's only one Prime Minister in the room and on the stage tonight, and that was Boris Johnson. He was unequivocal, very clear, that the Conservative Party, under his leadership, is the only party that will lead a government that will get Brexit done. And that's what the British public but are crying out for right now. how can he get Brexit done? let me finish, please. Dawn, I didn't interrupt. Let me finish. And with that, once we get Brexit done, and this is the key thing, and to be fair, Jeremy Corbyn could not even answer what he was going to do on Brexit. He refused nine times. And when we speak about trust in politics and the breakdown in politics and the gridlock we've seen in Westminster, the fact that Jeremy Corbyn couldn't even outline his own Brexit policy. Because that's exactly what he wanted. That was exactly the line that they prepared. That's exactly the line that wanted to say. But let me answer it for you, Pretty. The thing is this. Jeremy Corbyn, as Prime Minister. It's not for him to deliver what he wants, it's for him to deliver what the country wants. And that's the difference between Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn will deliver what the country wants, and the country not voted what he in wants. 2016 Boris for Johnson the referendum stopped to his leave. own Brexit deal in Parliament. Let's tell the country the truth. I'm so irritated by that man, I cannot tell you. Well, and actually, the audience yeah. seemed fairly irritated at times too, pretty much. I mean, the audience laughed down Boris Johnson when he was asked about trust and whether well, he tells well, the I truth. Well, I think it's worth relating and noting the fact the audience also laughed at Mr Corbyn on his Brexit policy as well. It was absolutely clear and abundant. There is no clear policy on Brexit. And I have to say, Dawn, the British public voted in 2016. It was called the EU referendum. They voted to leave. And actually, what kind of democracy do we live in if the Labour Party are effectively proposing for next year that we'd have two referendums, one on the EU and 
a second oh. one on So you don't want Scottish, the public to make Scottish the final referendum. decision then? We have had so you don't our want referendum, the public to make, You we don't want the public to make the In 2016, the country no. voted Do to you leave want the public and the country the... want to get Brexit done. And Do I travel want... the country every day and I speak to members so of the public every day. And I can tell Do you, you now, the they want Brexit done. to have done. a people's right. vote and make the final decision, yes or no? Because we do. There and we are the only party already. that wants to do that. We are the only party that is saying to the country, you will make the final decision. And what will be on the ballot paper is a credible leave option and a remain option. Very clear, very straightforward. So, Dawn, I'm delighted you've confirmed tonight that there will be a second referendum under yes. a Labour government next yes, year. Will. That is exactly what the British people okay. don't want. Right. They want Look. us to get Brexit done so they we will. can carry okay. on doing okay. it. I'm glad, I've allowed you. I'm glad Britain now understands our Brexit policy. Hopefully the rest of the Conservatives well, miss, will miss, too. Well, there was laughter tonight about whether the audience understood <laughs> so your Brexit good. policy. So. But look, Let's hope so. I've allowed you two to have a good old debate this evening. There were actually, oddly, some kind of conciliatory moments in this debate too. Most notably, a moment when the two leaders shook hands, when Julie Etchingham was asking them whether they could shake hands and promise uh, not to allow this kind of festering anger in politics uh, to, to grow and to become uh, any worse. And there was an interesting moment when they were asked, uh, I think we've got a clip of it here actually, uh, whether they would uh, give each other a Christmas present and what they'd leave each other under the tree. Let's have a little listen to, to the answers that they gave to that. Leaving politics aside, gentlemen. OK, leaving politics aside, what gift would you lead? leave for Mr Johnson under the Christmas tree? Well, well, I know Mr Johnson likes a good read. So what I would probably leave under the tree for him would be A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And he could... <laughs> and he can then understand how nasty Scrooge was. Thank you. <laughs> Mr Johnson. Uh, well, I think what I, I would probably leave a, a copy of, uh, uh, since you want a, a literary uh, effort, uh, a copy of uh, my brilliant Brexit deal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, in that spirit, maybe I could ask you two, what would you leave each other under the Christmas tree? Dawn, let's start with you. Well, I've got the perfect present for Boris Johnson. I'd it's like... for You've got to give people for Priti Patel, otherwise but she hasn't got a gift here. I'd like to leave Boris a present, a lie detector test. Right, OK. And for Priti Patel? For Priti Patel, I will leave you, Priti, um, uh, a lovely pair of shoes. <laughs> That's actually quite nice. <laughs> yeah, I like well, I will tell you, I'm an Essex MP and I have one of the world famous jam factories in my constituency, Wilkin and Sons, and I would gift Dawn some beautiful jams from Essex. Well, it is an election. You've got to get in the <laughs> constituency. Okay. Look, Dawn Butler, Pretty Patel, thank you so much for joining me. Right, so that's the verdict of the politicians. Let's just take another quick look at the snap poll that I tweeted earlier. Remember, this isn't scientific. This has gone out on social media. It's liable to be manipulated by various parties. 78% say Jeremy Corbyn won that debate, 22% say Boris Johnson. We do know that Labour is a little bit more engaged on social media, so let's just take it with a pinch of salt, but an interesting result there nonetheless. OK, let's go for another ro roam around the room, shall we? Who have we got in the room? So over here we've got the Brexit party. Gawain, are we allowed to speak to you tonight? I'm, I'm press officer, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Who have you got we can speak to? We've got Richard Tice over there. Maybe we have a very, a very quick word. A very short word, Richard Tice, if you may, the chair of the uh, Brexit party. What did you make of that debate? I thought it was, um, uh, it was pretty fiery, as you'd expect. The, the main thing that came out of it for us, the Brexit party, was uh, the Prime Minister's reaffirmation of his pledge that the transition period will definitely end in December 20. You know, otherwise, there was all sorts of nonsense and lies portrayed by Jeremy Corbyn about privatising the NHS. Everybody needs to just forget that. That's utter nonsense. So does the Brexit party feel even more comfortable about endorsing well, effectively Boris always, Johnson after that debate? Keep, we're always going to keep holding the Conservatives to account on this key issue. We need to leave. We need to leave properly and we need to get on with it. And the Prime Minister has reaffirmed that you know, by us winning seats in the House of Commons in this election, we we can hold them to account. OK, Richard Tice, thank you very much. Let's see who else is in the room. We need to try and get around this way, don't we? If we just come over here, around the corner... Oh, I can smell some food, actually, in here. What is in here? Oh, that looks really good, actually. <laughs> looks like chilli, is it? Chilli. Yeah, OK, I'll get some of that later. And then just over here, we have our podcast oh, team. Hello, hello. hello. good evening. Our Calling Peston podcast team, who are preparing for a special edition tonight, aren't you? So, guys, what's on the podcast tonight and what did you make of the debate? She have. Uh, so, we're going to go through all the best bits from tonight's debate and then we're going to be looking at, yeah, we're talking to spinners on both sides. What to was get your favourite bit? 
my favourite bit. I thought fascinating that Jeremy Corbyn didn't answer that question on which way he's going to be voting if there's another Brexit yeah, yeah. referendum. I think that's going to be the key takeaway from the Tories. But we'll be speaking to spinners from both sides to get their reaction. Dan, what do you make of it? I thought it was really interesting. Uh, the fact that uh, the audience was so animated. I don't think we've ever yeah. seen an audience that animated. I'm quite in, angry and yeah. kind of, you know, I, cynical. It's genuinely, I think, the sign of the times, Paul, that we had a debate on television like that. Previous debates have not had an audience like that. Whooping, clapping, yeah, almost, yeah. almost booing people's reactions. I think it's a sign of the times that politics is so divided and people, and that gloss of politicians has kind of gone. People feel like they can shout at them, boo at them, clap at them whenever yeah, they want. Yeah, that's sort of now. fair game, aren't they? Very okay. much so, yeah. All right, guys, well, look, good luck with the podcast this evening. See you, Paul. Thank you. I'll see you later. Hello, Lewis. Hello. Right, let's try and get back now. Can we do it? Can we squeeze around this way? Maybe if we go, oh, this is going to be a dead end this way. That's a bad idea. Robert, we're going to the same place as you, Robert. He's not listening to me. What are we Robert doing? Peston, hello. Oh, we're, we're coming with you live on ITV. <laughs> Don't forget that. Don't forget. <laughs> I'm chasing you down. Come right. on. What are Come we over to the live spot. Come over to this camera here. Right, right, right. Let's have one final chat with you, Robert Peston, our physical editor, of course. If you come here, just so we can uh, get a right. good shot of you. OK. Do you think that debate changed anything in this election, Robert? Probably not. Uh, I actually thought both leaders performed actually as well as their teams could have hoped. There were no significant fluffs. Um, as I'm sure you've been saying to all our guests, or talking uh, about with all our guests, uh, Boris Johnson was at time monotonously, monotonously consistent mm. about, you know, his get Brexit done line. He used every possible question, even some, which did not seem uh, particularly relevant to the Brexit question. He uh, used every possible question to get back to the fact that he claims uh, that he has a simple deal that will get through Parliament. Um, I was slightly surprised, for example, though, that Jeremy Corbyn didn't challenge him about how he's going to get his trade deal done by the end of 2020, mm, mm. which some would say is a weakness of well, Johnson. So he did pull out that document at one point about you know, the NHS being on the table, which for yeah, Labour yeah. And, and, has and, actually and, been quite an effective argument. It has been, but, uh, you know, Johnson was absolutely categoric that uh, he will not allow privatisation of the NHS as a result of a trade deal. And he went as far as he could to uh, dismiss the idea that American drug companies will be given the kind of access to the NHS which would drive up drug prices. Um, but that is, in, in, in a way, Johnson's weakest position. The other part of it, though, that I thought was really interesting, and obviously it's not been at the heart of the general election, but they were asked um, about whether the monarchy was fit for purpose. Yes. And yeah. what was really interesting was that Jeremy Corbyn said room for improvement and actually got some applause in the room. And if he said that and, before the Prince Andrew and, episode, and, and, he might not have got the same applause. Ex ex exactly. And it was very interesting that when... Uh, Boris Johnson said it's beyond reproach. You could hear a pin drop. Now, there's no question that in that audience, mm. uh, Corbyn had the better of that. I'm not so sure that in the country at large, Corbyn's position on the monarchy will be quite so popular. Okay. Obviously, Prince Andrew has changed the nature of the debate, mm. that controversial interview. But I still think, you know, a majority of British people broadly love the Queen. And so I don't really know how that's going to play, whether, it, whether, whether in the country at large it'll play quite the same way as it played in, in that hall. Um, but as I say, the key thing, it, seem, it seems to me, is that neither leader made what I regard as a significant error. Um, both actually were quite good on their stronger points. Mm. Jo you know, jo uh, Johnson on getting his deal done uh, and uh, Corbyn on public services, particularly the NHS. Yes, yeah. Um, so I guess they will both come out of it feeling sort of OK. I think it's sort uh, of a score draw for you? Or? Yeah, sort of yeah. probably a sort of score-ish kind of draw okay. and we await the, the manifestos and maybe that will change the momentum. All right, Robert, thanks so much. You've got to go off and Robert do the too. podcast now, I think. <laughs> I think I probably have. Thanks for your time. See Come you soon. Bit. See you in a bit. OK, right. Let's take a look at your uh, snap verdict on Twitter now. Just one more time before we uh, finish for this evening. And Jeremy Corbyn, as I said to you earlier, finished up on 78%. Boris Johnson at 22%. Just remember that poll is not scientific. But almost 30,000 votes were cast. So quite a big sample. But again, it can be skewed by various tactics on social media. And that is it now here from the ITV debate Unspun. 
Coming up at 10 p.m., party leaders from the Liberal Democrats, the SNP, the Brexit Party and the Green Party will be responding to the debate and setting out their own policies in the ITV election interviews. You can watch that on ITV or you can stay here on ITV.com slash news, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. But from all of us here in Salford, good night.